So we move into chapter 3 now. Let's take the first two verses. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So this is what I call a great controversy vision. This is a vision that outlines this great war, this great moral war between good and evil. And you have three primary agents here. You have Joshua, Yeshua, really, literally his name means salvation of God. He's standing, he represents God's people. He's standing before the angel of the Lord. We've already seen that the angel of the Lord represents, that's Jesus, that's God, right? And then we also have finally Satan or Satan. In Hebrew, it means adversary. He's standing also at the right hand of Joshua, Yeshua. So that, that right hand position, that's whether you're left-handed or right-handed, in the Bible, the right hand is symbolically a position of power. It's a position of authority. And there's the devil. He's standing at Yeshua's right hand to resist him. So that signifies that the devil's plan is to uh, do the ultimate opposition. He's, he's going to do the maximum. To resist God's people. The remnant of God's people are on alert here. There's a war on between good and evil. So the devil stands at the right hand, and we just talked about that, but it's also true that, that God is on the side of his people. He declares himself to be unequivocally on the, in favor of his people, and the devil's antics are unjustified. God is going to come and address all their needs. He's going to, there's a hot war on between good and evil. This is not just a, something that's just dragging on in a random way for, for thousands of years. This is a hot war, and God is at work for his people. Each side has its own strategic objectives, uh, military objectives. There's a war on between right and wrong, and God's determined to win it. Uh, this is, there are personal, intense personal active agents on either side of the question, and God is calling us to be a part of that. And so... There, this is not a uh, joy ride. This is the ultimate conflict of all the ages between what's good and what's bad, selfishness and unselfishness. And we've been called to be active agents in that conflict. We do not live in an amoral universe. Uh, the, the, the devil is trying with all of his cunning, all of his might, every, every last thing he can do to, to win this thing. He thinks that somehow he can win it. And God is also really uh, working in a premium way. Uh, a lot of times the church is sleeping, and we can see that some of the devil's tactics are working out pretty well. But in the end, God's going to prevail. He calls us to be active soldiers in this war. And the good thing about this, too, is judgment is left with the Lord. We don't have to go out and, and shoot at anybody or maim anybody. What we need to do is be true to Jesus. We just need to be faithful to God and uh, proclaim the message, live the message, live a message in a way that's that's persuasive. If we come out as hypocritical, why, well, you know, yeah, the devil will just say, yeah, score that one in my column. But God is working, God is winning, and there's a great controversy. There's a war on between good and evil. You and I get to be part of it. And uh, this is actually to the good, not to the bad. So what can you and I do in a practical way? What can we do to, to apply all this? Well, we can view this war between good and evil. We can view all of our life in, ter in this terms. This, this is the lens. This is how we view things. We're in a, a war between good and evil, right and wrong, and we need to choose the right and help others choose the right. And that's what Jesus would have us to do, all the way down here at the end of time in the 2020s. Mm -hmm.